Welcome to Uniquely Brilliant, a podcast for creative, quirky, and extraordinary thinkers of all ages and the people who love them. We encourage, inspire, and provide strategies to motivate you to embrace your unique brilliance and realize your potential for success. Hi, I'm Diana Bader, also known as Coach Di. I encourage teens and young adults to become who they are and develop personal success through self-awareness and positivity. You can find me at freshcanvascoaching.com, follow and like the Fresh Canvas Facebook page, or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Di. Hello there, I'm Becky Berry. I am a performance coach who helps people level up their lives by smoothing out the relationship between their work lives and their personal lives. You can find my website at BeckyBerryCoach.com. I'm on Twitter at BeckyBerryCoach. And you can find me on my Facebook page, Becky Berry Coach. Together, we are here sharing our thoughts, insights, and experiences from our own uniquely brilliant perspective. All right, it's episode 109. And today we're going to talk about you aren't who you were yesterday. You pro- you aren't- Hopefully not. I mean, yeah. I'd like to think I was maybe a little, ooh, I guess I could be better or worse than I was yesterday, but I'm not the same person. No, Stuff a- happened yesterday. Yeah, you're, and it's your choice what you brought forward. So, this is your topic. So I know. You get to take the, whoever brings the topic to the table gets to take the lead. So, this is Diana's. Well, okay, so I haven't been sleeping. And this is not where this topic was born, because a couple nights ago, I woke up at 3.30 wide awake. Like, Raise your hand if this happens to you. Uh-huh. I see a bunch of hands going up, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, but this hasn't, like this has been going, hasn't happened in a long time. And, I mean, I was, like, wide awake and ready to go. I w- and I was felt, like, refreshed sleep. Oh, that's great. Well, did you go to bed early? No. I okay. went to No, uh, I probably went to bed about 11.30. So, wow, that's amazing. That's pretty cool. It is. It was, it was really weird. So, but I was fighting it Uh huh. because it's three 30 in the morning and your body's going, well, you're not the person you were yesterday. So let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and, and it was like, you know, I was trying, I, oh, I, I should go back to sleep. I right? should do this. Uh-huh. But you know, the more I should, the more thoughts that popped into my head. And that's what this did because I'd had a lot of conversations recently with people who are carrying things that they've done in the past with them forward. Uh huh. And you always take a little bit of it, but it, it's some of these conversations, it's like they're carrying a huge backpack with boulders in it. Right. And they don't seem to realize that they don't have to. I agree. I mean, that, that, that's true. I know that's, I mean, I do so, a good bit of that. Well, and the other thing that popped in my head with this too was something that I used to do with my kids. When my kids would get in trouble, they would immediately go to, you know, their bad kid. Uh-huh. And so my mantra was always, you know, you know, I love you. You are a good kid. What you did was not great. Yeah. <laughs> this is, it's this your is action. not you. This yes. is not who you are at yeah. your core. And so many people take this stuff that they've done, the experiences they've had, especially the negative ones, because uh-huh. we always tend to carry the negative stuff more than remember the positive, and make that a part of who they are. Okay. So, and bring that that stuff forward. So, you know, if, if you weren't a great student, yeah, you know, you carry that, a lot of people carry that forward that I can't learn. I can't learn this technology. You're, you're going to yeah. be facing a lot of that with these, with this boot camp you have coming up. You know, well, I can't learn this. I wasn't a good student. I didn't do well in math. I didn't, you know. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, that. But but when you're talking about the boot camp and technology, it's your first experience with technology. That's a big one. It's mm-hmm. a big, gigantic one since technology is, is so important nowadays as well. You know, the first time I touched a computer, I blew it up. I'm like, well, yeah, if that was in the 90s, that's possible. It's really hard to do that now. You know, we can move past that. Things have evolved past that. So, you know, let's, let's see what that really looks like now. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can totally see that. But, and I hear that a lot. I do hear that. I I I wasn't a good student. It's, you know, separate from technology. Just, yeah. It's about jobs. Mm -hmm. For for mine, it, it, for my clients, it's about jobs and about, well, I've just never been able to do this. Which, you know, is like, 
a, a, a red uh, a red flag to a bull. I'm like, ooh, let's go. <laughs> exactly. Why can't you do this? Uh-huh. What's up with this? You know, then you get to do all those coach questions. Yeah, exactly. But I just find it really fascinating how much we, we bring forward with us from these experiences. Yeah. And hang on to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. My therapist once did, Kathy, the famous Kathy, once did a um, thing. I don't know. I wouldn't let go of something. I don't know what it was. This past stuff. So she tied a heater, you know, a space heater, a little cube one, to my ankle and made me walk around her office with it. <laughs> and we we're talking. And she goes, now take it off. And I, and I took it off. And she goes, you know, this is your crap that you're carrying around with you. She wouldn't say crap, but I would. Um, and so now take it off. And my shoulders went down for like a nanosecond, which is like a huge big deal. Um, particularly back then. That was mm-hmm. a long time ago. I went, whoa. She's like, that's what you're doing. You literally have it tethered to your leg. And you're just like pulling it along with you. You don't need to. Exactly. You don't need you to. You don't need to. And and you don't listen. Here's here's the thing. Here's we're giving you permission that. right now not to. Right. <laughs> well, I think there's a misconception that we have to resolve those things. Oh, that's what if point. we decided we didn't have to resolve everything in our past, mm-hmm. and we could just move through it, let, or just let it go. Let it go. Well, we've yeah. already moved through it, so you're already past it mm-hmm. past past it so every time it comes up you just go oh i'm past that boom yep i'm past that boom i'm past that it's a practice it is it it's is. like the gratitude it's like anything People, oh it's so hard i'm like yeah it is so hard until it's not well and one of the, the big lessons that i've learned in the last five or six years has been asking myself if stuff is serving me and it's really become huge now that I'm like going through my house. <laughs> yeah. Do I want to take? The, do I want to put this in a moving van? <laughs> do I want? Yeah. Do I want somebody else to move it out of my house? Do I want to me? pay somebody to do this? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. How much is this going to cost? Because um, when I was on my trip, that was one of the things the boys were supposed to do was to clean up a bunch ha, of their stuff. Ha. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And yeah. when you told me that, I went. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, because if they didn't, then I'm going to, and nope. I'm going to do it my way. There you go. Um. So they did some, but not nearly what I was expecting, which was on me, even though I was very clear on what I wanted. Um, yeah, but when you told me, I was like, oh, uh-huh. yeah, not going to happen. Well, but I did explain to them that anything past a certain amount, they were going to pay for the weight of moving it. And there you go. I love that. Because I'm not going to do it. Good for you. It's yeah, not right. that important. You know, what is the important stuff? To, there's plenty of things from your past that are important. Life lessons. Yeah. You know, things you've learned. Everything else, that gets to come. But, you know. And it's not all pleasant. No, no. Uh, we're not saying that you have to ditch the unpleasant stuff. The, oh, no. The horrible things. No. You no. grind it to a pebble so you yeah. take the nugget from well, it. Well, I mean, you just it's just part of who you are. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of death and, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Illnesses and stuff. You know, you just take it with you. It's just a part of now. It's part of who you are. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be a pebble. It's just a part of who you are. You know, it's not causing great conflict or anything until it like rears its head and you know slaps your brand a little bit and you're like, oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> you know, but it's not. Um, you don't have to leave that behind. That's not. That's not. Ne- it's not negative. Well, it depends what you take from it, you yeah. know? I mean, if, if you let that weigh you down, mm-hmm. if you let those experiences become heavy and stop you from your forward progress, right? then they become negative. But if you take them and say, yeah, I went through this and it it did something to me, you know, it... it became, I did it. I went through it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm I just survived saying, it. I, half whatever. of it's just surviving it. Yeah. Cancer, death, you know, you just go, okay, check. Yeah, exactly. It's and like it, at school when you lose your first kid. When you lose your f- first kid as a teacher, everybody does it. Every teacher's always done it. I'll never forget the day one of my best friends did it. Really young teacher, lost the kid. She is freaking out. And all of us are going, well, check that off your list. You'll never have to do that. And we found the kid and everything mm-hmm. was fine. It usually is, right? But just that terror. But we're just like, well, check it off the list. And that's kind of how I think about the the, the big scary things or big sad things it's like well okay i've done that i've done yeah, that yeah. i've done that. and i had a bunch of these in the last five years i didn't realize this until i was writing my 18 for 2018 and i was like what 
That's all in five years. Yeah, but you're not you you're not letting them stop your forward progress. They're not a weight. They're something else. It, they did at the. It's, they did yeah, well. Yeah, no, they, well, kind of. They did it. They slowed me down. They slowed me down. But yeah, well, yeah. But slowing you down isn't always such a bad thing, <laughs> right? <laughs> it gives right. you a little more perspective. But it doesn't have to. It it, it can inform who I am. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't have to determine who I am. Yes, I like that. A right, lot. because it is who I am. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm not the same me I was yesterday. I'm not the same me I was five years ago. But all of that informs who I am, which is why I reject the word reinvention, right? Yep. It's that whole reinvention, evolution versus evolution, which is constant progress, which can be halting and which can go backwards. But I'm here. I'm still standing. That's success. Yeah, exactly. And I was... Um... The term, like, you know, people who are jerks and stuff. I got in a conversation about that. And so I went to a place, like a compassion place. It's mm -hmm. like, well, think of how much that person must be carrying around to be in that much pain to be that big of a jerk. Right. Because that's usually what happens is those people who are the nastiest and the meanest are usually carrying around something that maybe it's sharp and pokey. Well, right. Something right. is just not, you know not helping them. Well, you develop, you develop these coping mechanisms mm -hmm. and you do the best you can with these coping yep. mechanisms. And then all of a sudden they become who you are and you've forgotten that you don't have to be that person. Yes. Yes. I was talking to a, to a high school teacher one day about classroom clowns. I said, well, it serves a purpose. At some point in their school, they were so unsuccessful and felt so bad about who they were in the classroom that they developed this persona of the classroom clown mm -hmm. and it serves them really well. So if you can be in that space and, and identify the times when that happens, you can do a lot to, to tone that down and to, to help, you know, resolve those feelings that you really don't have to do it this way anymore. Yeah. Because you're not that person anymore. It can be what you were just saying about um, looking at that person differently instead of getting upset. I call it relentless grace. That's from the church I go to in um, in Virginia Highlands. It's very, very progressive. When you do that, when you offer relentless grace, you are you are you start by assuming good. Mm -hmm. You know, we can start by assuming good for ourselves too. Yes, you could say something really mean to me, not that you would, but if you did, I would go. Okay, that's weird, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it's very I'd be out like, of character. I'd be like Diana. That's pretty weird. My sister Susie and I did this one day. I mean, we just went out. Of, we don't do that. Well, I don't think we ever really did that. That was Jeannie and us. But, but I have three sisters. So, um, but anyway, I'm, I'm and I just leave her house, and then I, I get like to the end of her street. I make a U-turn in somebody's driveway. I come back. I'm like, what was that? And we're like, we figured it out. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. You do. Yeah. I mean, no, you don't. When well, you do that. Your life is more pleasant. And every time you do that, you get to be, in my in my view, you get to be a better person than you were before it happened. Because in that moment, you went, wait, this does not add up. Like you said, you know, people generally don't want to be cruel. So if they are being cruel, if you see them, if you acknowledge them, if you say something, you can you can frequently change that behavior. Because that's an attention-getting mechanism. But I, I, I really like what you're saying with that. Because, And one of the things that jumped out at me was that it's much easier for us to do it with other people than with ourselves. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And it, we've, we've got to get into a habit of doing it. I mean, I can feel I, I've been in the last couple of days, I've had this really whacked out energy. And that's <laughs> never good with me. <laughs> and I had a shift i'm like okay you know you've got a lot going on this is a new year don't bring this forward mm -hmm. whatever it is and i could feel the energy shifting mm -hmm. but for a few days up to that you know I'm, i was talking to some friends i was doing you know i'm like this is driving me crazy and i was just like in this chaotic space and then it wasn't until i gave myself the same grace that i would give somebody else that it's like oh okay <laughs> And it was, it was really like that quick of a shift. Right. Ridiculous. That is a good one. That, that it, well, 
it's just catching ourselves in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because we're not, that's like a fallback position. Do you know? Yeah. Things aren't going right quite the way we expect it. We make a mistake we've made before. So that fallback position is, I always do that. Why do I always oh, yes. do that? Duh, you know, so there's all that pat. Always, right? Always. You're not who you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, no. That's I've never to. made this mistake before. Because I've never been in this minute right here before. And part of, I think, what... what brought me into thinking about this topic too was, you know, after this thyroid cancer, my medicines have been a little freaky and I have to remember. <laughs> a little freaky. <laughs> well, understatement. I, it's, it's affected my mood and my energy and everything else. And I have to, I finally got to a place where I could go, hold up. This is not me. Mm -hmm. This is something else going on. Right. This is, and it was like, it was giving, it was giving me false feelings. I mm -hmm. mean, there was like good things happening all around me, but I was feeling really angry or really depressed or really, you know, yeah. lots of the really, really deeply. Cause that's how I feel. Uh -huh. And I had to go, whoa, no, this, this, this isn't just me. means I'm not in balance. Yeah. Like physically. And so those little things in our life are a great key to identify, hold on. Am I, am I, I'm bringing something, I'm carrying something that I shouldn't be carrying. Right. Right. I think it's also in the context of your thyroid meds and, and how the thyroid is so critical to your emotions is that you go, I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not getting any younger. I'm like, what the heck? I was doing some yoga this morning. I'm like, what? I was like, oh, yeah, I am not the same person I was yesterday <laughs> <laughs> or 10 years ago or whatever. Same thing with you is I'm not that my body's not the same. My emotions are not going to be the same right now until we get all this stabilized. Yes. And, and otherwise you're like pulling this junk with you. You're pulling, you're, you're blaming yourself for something that's not you. Yeah. And, and, and it's the physical changes from aging, but they're also changes from medical conditions and, and mm -hmm. all those things. And, and they're real. Oh yeah. Every, yeah. We're not, I'm not saying that none of this is real. It is so very real. Mm -hmm. It's just... You know, I think that we forget what to do with it. Right? Well, our default is blame. Mm -hmm. And our default default is blame ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, for us, not everybody. Some people, their default default is blame everybody else. But for us, it's blame ourselves. Instead of going, wait a minute, let me just take a minute here and check in. Does anybody, need, does there need to be blame? Those emotions, there was no blame. Mm -hmm. It just is. Yeah. You know, it's like if you're, if you have depression or if you, I mean, cause now you're kind of in that moving, kind of in that space because you, you have to take a medication to help keep everything regulated. And there's no blame there. You know, well, my brother used to apologize for having a, a, an episode and I'm like, what is that? What? Did you do it on purpose? No. I'm like, so? What are we apologizing for here? Same thing for our, you know, he's doing that. He's blaming himself. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. It's his chemistry. That's what I've been trying to get out of my mouth. It's your chemistry. And you just have to go, all right, I've got to deal with this right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And not shove it back and not feel guilty about it and not blame yourself for it. See, well, that's what happens when we blame, right? Well, and, and you make it bigger. Right? Yeah. It's like, it's like taking... It festers. Yeah. And it just creates a bigger and heavier thing that you're carrying with you. Right. I've been thinking a lot about uh, shame oh, lately gosh, because right. that's shame and blame. They go hand in hand with all this kind of stuff. And, you know, things that, that you might have done in your past, you were doing what you could, when you could, how you could, all yep. that stuff. And, you know, just because you can think differently and see differently now doesn't mean that was wrong. Right. It's, it means that you moment. did the best you could in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think we forget that. That's another one of those places where we don't give ourselves grace. And so when you get to a place where you can see that from a different perspective, mm -hmm. you can either see it from the perspective of, hey, that's what, that was that moment. Right. That's that what I could do then. That, uh -huh. You know, that was the choice I made at that time. And, you know, that yeah. was it. Or like so many of us do is... You look back and, I, oh, man, if I did, never did that. 
And then you start, and then you start building that one back up, making it a bigger thing than it needs to be. Right, right. I had my um, a lot of work done on the house after Bo died, which is like a thing for for most widows, as they do a lot of stuff to their houses when their <laughs> husbands die. And one of the things was I had my um, bathroom redone because it was you know thirty some years old, and the guys messed it up. You've seen it, right? Where they didn't mix the stuff right. So grout that should be white is black and, you know, stuff like that. And I get all over myself. I'll be in the shower uh, and, I, you know, I'm very nearsighted, but I can still see this. I'm like, oh, why did you? And why didn't you? And you should have. And, and I'm like, uh, stop it. You were out of your mind, as you should have been. So it's okay. Yeah. Well, it's not, it is. what It, it is okay. It is. I'm going to say it's okay. Here on the podcast, it's okay. Yes, for sure. Uh, but now I stop myself a lot faster than I used to. I just get on a rant, you know, a mental rant. Mm-hmm. I tend to do that too. Right. I think it's normal. And then I try, yeah. But I, I, when you learn and when you believe that you can, you know, change that, that today is a new day, that yeah. it's not that, and you don't have to. You're t- not the same person you were mm-hmm. yesterday. And did, I, the other thought that I was having is, you know, this big thing that you're carrying around, the other thing I've had to trouble with is being present. And I think part of being present is to put that pack down for, you know, and just be. Yeah. She did that whole yoga thing with her fingers. <laughs> I do that all the time. In case you missed it. Because <laughs> you can't see it. But the thumb and the index finger, she did the whole thing as she was talking. My mudra. Yes. <laughs> what is it? Mudra. Mudra. Yeah. I don't know what the technical names for these things are. I just recognize them when I see them. <laughs> it's so funny. That's funny. Well, I, I, you know, people always say meditating is a great way to stay in the present, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Because now I've been doing it, I guess I'm in my second full month. And it is a kick butt way to stay in the present, to practice staying in the present. Because I do two guided meditations and then one four minute silent thing. And yesterday, well, it's hilarious. I'm doing one of them. It's four minutes long. And my brain is it's so bad that I do it again because I just can't even, I'm like, wait, she can't be there yet, but I've been somewhere else. I'm <laughs> yeah. not here. I'm not in that chair. I'm not listening to her. So I do it again. And then my next one's a lot more complicated. It's also guided meditation, music, the whole nine yards. It's a um, Hindu thing, which I love. And I did it again. Not as bad, but I did it again. I just went, okay. And then I did my four-minute silent one, which, of course, was... I, when it's like that, I don't worry about just focusing on my breathing. I just try to grab a couple of thoughts and keep those thoughts in the front. Like, mm-hmm. you know, keep my eyes, ears, heart, and mind open to what's out there today. And, you know, I can, um, the serenity prayer followed by I can't change other people, places, or things. This morning, it all came back. It was all better. This morning, you know, I did, I did, um, I was, I was 90%, I'd say, uh, on, on all of them. My phone was ringing and I was like, oh, stop it, leave me alone. Then I did yoga, which again, you know, these things are so, well, particularly the yoga, because now I'm getting physical. Mm-hmm. I have to stay in it. I mean, I have to stay, I have to be paying attention. I can't be thinking about, you know, what bills I got to pay, what I got to write for marketing. I can't be thinking about any of that stuff. So it just keeps me smack in the present. So that's like a literal description of how I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Yes. I mean, a literal description. And I was the day before I was in a financial situation, which I got resolved. And so yesterday morning when I woke up, I was like flooded with ideas, like flooded with stuff. Like I wrote things for an hour and sent emails and stuff. And I was like, oh, well, that shifted my energy. <laughs> you know, so literally, you can think about those things and go, oh, okay, so I'm really not. You know, I, I, I have, I can prove to myself that I don't have to be the same person I was yesterday, and indeed I am not that same person. I think that those are great examples. And I had a thought and it just totally left my brain. Uh-oh, <laughs> I talked too long. <laughs> no, that's all right. It's fine. No, but I, I think... Um, that staying in the present and choosing to stay in the present and, you know, not beating yourself up if you can, if you're, you've got mm-hmm. monkey mind going on is okay. Well, this is where 
my meditation is today. Today, my meditation is bouncing all over the place. Right. Today, my energy is low. Whatever it is, wherever mm -hmm. you are today, don't hold on to the fact that it's going to be that or tomorrow. Don't take that with you. Right. Because I think we tend That's to should, do that. right? That's a should. It's, it's, it's a it's should. shouldn't. It's a shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, path. That's like a warning. <laughs> no. No, no, no. If you're saying I shouldn't have, well. then you're like, you're not letting yourself move forward. Yeah, you're 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 giving yourself too many. You you got in yourself ex expectations. expectations. <laughs> <laughs> she evil hates them so much she can't. I can't even say, say them. Word. Word. I can't even get it out of my mouth. Yeah, I do hate them that much. But um, but yeah, it's but it's human. Oh, it's all it, totally. It's, I mean, this whole thing is like just normal. It's yeah. normal. It's how we are. It's how our brains work. It's not just that we want to be different. It's kind of like the default mode of the brain is to notice the negative, mm -hmm. respond to not, do the opposite. I mean, that's how the brains are wired because that goes to, that that's way more um, stimulating. So when we do the meditation, when we do the things, when we call ourselves back, we're fighting against our nature and that's why it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, originally all that stuff was wired to protect us. Right. And when we're trying to protect ourselves too much, we actually hurt ourselves. Right. Right. I agree. So, so everything that we're talking about, this staying present, letting go of some of this stuff, it, it isn't, it's counterintuitive to who we are. To our instincts. Yeah. But it's, it's what you need to do. I call it to move forward. It's counterintuitive to my snake brain. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I, I always, I love the whole reptilian brain thing. Yeah. I don't call it reptilian. It's too big. Snake works for me. <laughs> Well, if I'm really angry. It's my rattlesnake brain. I'm sorry with with my uh, zoologist son. It's it's reptilian something something. I'm sure I, I've probably <laughs> messed that up too, but yeah. But we go back to those those instincts. But you aren't who you were yesterday. Nope. You don't have to be. Right. You just pick the stuff that you need to move for you forward, and keep going forward. And if you don't know what you need to take you forward, don't. Just yeah, go we'll, forward and it'll it'll come to you. Yeah, it'll, some of it'll drop off along yeah. the way anyway as you pick up new things that are better. And you won't even realize it. And yeah, I, exactly. I find that a lot. I'm like, whoa, wait, hold on. I'll say something. I'm like, where did that come from? And that came from my past. Mm -hmm. It came from something I've read, listened, who knows, right? Who knows? And there it is. But distilled in my brain and cooked in my brain, however you want to say it, it, it it's gone through all of my process and come out in this way. To, to solve a situation for me, to come up with a strategy for a client. What a strategy at home. People are always like, how did you think to do that? I'm like, you know, I might have read it in the family handyman in 1962 in the bathroom <laughs> at my house. It could be that that's where it's from. Because my sister and I will go, oh, wait, did we read this here? And i got to tell you, some of the stuff I do with my client, good housekeeping. Do you remember, can this marriage be saved? Oh, wasn't that in Good Housekeeping? Yeah, I think, I think so. it was. Uh, or it's either better, it's Better Homes and Gardens. I think it was in Better Homes and Gardens. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll just, because sometimes it's interesting to me. I'm like, where on earth, where on earth could I have read something like that? And I'm like, I wonder if it was. I wish they put all those online so I can search. <laughs> oh, yeah. In that doctor's well, waiting room or at home or wherever I read that. But, you know, you pro you took it. And like you said, you percolated in your own brain yeah. and then you made it your own. Right. And that's where. See, I've been interested in coaching all my life. Mm -hmm. Just didn't know it. You and me both. Can this marriage be safe? Boy, that was one of my favorite things to read. So what else? I think. Is there anything? Are, we, are we good? Yeah. I think Have we exhausted the subject? I think so. I'm sure our ex listeners are exhausted trying to keep up. I think so. Don't play, <laughs> don't play this podcast on double speed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. So we are going to take a minute, uh, no, a second and figure out our stamp of brilliance and we will be right back. All right. Today, our stamp of brilliance is the past informs who we are, but it doesn't determine it. Yep. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Just Guarantees bring... forward progress. Mm, absolutely. I really like that. 
Well, today, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with a friend. Also, take a minute and rate it and leave a review on iTunes. Check out our website at uniquelybrilliant.me and sign up to have the podcast delivered directly to your inbox. Shoot any thoughts, comments, suggestions to talk the number to us at uniquelybrilliant.me. You can also reach out to us on our Facebook page and on our YouTube. And don't forget to like us. Please like us, subscribe to us, and... Um on YouTube. Until next time.